Okay, so uh, module number six, we will be doing the link budget analysis. Okay, so there are two kind of analysis when we are talking of system design. One is the power budget. Okay, usually we call it as the link power budget. And the second thing is we call as the rise time budget analysis. So any uh, network uh, engineer who is designing the network, once he has selected all the components and all, see, we think, ki, okay, this will be the distance, itne transmitter rahenge, I need to have all these things, I require an amplifier, I, or if the distance is more, I require a repeater and all. Okay, so before actually the system starts working fully, the customers are given uh, the access to that system, I need to test the system also. Okay, so how will I test the system is, here we are talking in terms of input power. So I will send a fraction of input power. Now, at the receiver, I know that, uh, or the destination, I know that I have to serve so many customers at the detector end, or you call it at the receiver end. Okay, so to uh, provide services to so many customers, what I require is, I require a certain amount of power level at the receiver. So, a component has transmitted power and the other component is the receiver power. Okay, so here suppose I am transmitting the power. Okay, so some amount of input power will be there. Then I know how many customers or what all kind of customers I am uh, providing or I'm trying to provide the service. So I have the receiver. So suppose I call it as the receiver power PR. Okay, so I have P in or PS, whatever you call it as source power or and the receiver power P. And here is my communication channel. Now, right now we are studying fiber optics. So my channel will be fiber. Okay, so we'll come to fiber later on. Now, an analogy which I'll try to draw over here is, suppose uh, your household. So here the word budget is coming. So how we are doing this budgeting? Power budgeting, kaise karte? So I have some transmitted power and I have the receiver power. Now what happens is you are designing the system today. Okay, you are testing the system today. Now after five years, will I get same PR over here or will I keep a margin? Because as the component ages, okay, due to temperature fluctuation, we know day by day the temperature levels, like in summer, the temperature uh, rises every year due to all these global warming and so on. So there are fluctuations in temperature. There is the aging that happens of the components, which I have installed five years ago. The current condition is different. So it means some losses take place due to either increase in temperature or due to aging. So incorporating all these losses, am I getting a sufficient PR at the receiver so that I am able to provide the desirable services to the customer? Okay, so it is not ki aaj ke liye many system design ki hai. I have to see, because see, it is not like satellite communication, which has only a limited life, fiber, microwave, unless the component is totally damaged, we say that this is a lifetime ke liye ek establishment. Ho gaya. Okay, satellite, nothing can be replaceable or uh, you cannot repair anything. But yes, in uh, the microwave, RF communication or in fiber, we can replace the component, we can repair the component. Okay, we can have components of different vendors if we want to replace uh, everything. Okay, so means it's a lifetime uh, setup which I'm trying to do. So lifetime setup means yes, then temperature fluctuation will take place. The aging of components will take place. So is my design incorporating all these things? See, usually when we are at a lower level of designing, we just think in terms of itna input power hai, haan, mujhe itna output power milna chahiye. We do all the calculations. We are very expert in circuits and networks and all. No, you have to take this. So what how I can take the effect of temperature, how I can effect, uh, take the effect of aging. Okay. Or it might happen that you have gone for network expansion. Okay. Network expansion hua means uh, a LAN is connected. So tapping points will be there. Okay. Distribution points will be there. So there again at that particular point, there will be power loss. 
सो ये सब इनकॉर्पोरेट होने के बाद भी वेदर आई एम गेटिंग द सेम पी आर not exactly the same pr but whether that pr is able to provide the desirable remember i'm using the word desirable service to that customer okay it might not be the 100% service but suppose i require a certain amount of power level to run or to provide uh, the services over here you are right now since if i'm talking of fiber optics it will be detector so is the sensitivity of the detector or the output of detector proper to run the Uh, this, uh, devices which are connected at the uh, destination or the receiver end. Okay, now just an analogy over here. Suppose in a family, somebody earns fifty thousand rupees. Okay, budgeting करना है. Okay, so all of us, those who are in the committees, okay, clubs, I Triple E, IIT. Whenever you have any event. you plan so you have a budget okay this will be the registration fee this will be the prize money i give this much to the speaker this much for the banners and posters any mementos you want to buy okay and then you prepare a budget and then you ask for uh, and then you also write something called as miscellaneous okay that component always is there agar nahi bhi hai still you write miscellaneous by 500 rupees or 1000 rupees in case थोड़ा आगे पीछे हो गया तो वाई आगे पीछे होगा हो सकता है ओके सो दैट इज वाई वी एड समेनियस कॉम्पोनेट सो सपोज योर एनोलॉजी ऑफ ट्रांसमीटर पावर आई से दैट माई इनकम इज फिफ्टी थाउजेंड रुपीज ना वॉट आई डिजायर इन अ फैमिली विथ ऑल एक्सपेंडिचर्स एवरीथिंग आई डू आई से दैट ओके फाइव थाउजेंड रुपीज इफ आई एम एबल टू सेव एवरी मंथ Okay, just consider the analogy. Five thousand rupees. If I am able to save every month, either I just have five thousand in my account, or I put it in a savings scheme. That is something else. Okay, if five thousand rupees out of this fifty thousand, if I am able to save, okay, then I can say that I have done the budgeting, or I have done the expenditure properly, or for the entire month. Now, what, where have you spent this fifty thousand rupees? Okay, five thousand. मैंने मुझे बचाना है. That is what is your target. That is actually how you plan. Okay, some people they can they have expenditure more than fifty thousand. Uh, uh, suppose uh, they take a loan and all. I'm not talking of that situation. I am talking of a situation where whatever is the income from that income, after all the expenditure, I will save. Five thousand. Then I say that yes, I have done the budgeting. I have done the spendings properly. That is how an ideal situation should be. Okay, so for fifty thousand, me what I do? I pay the house rent. Okay, I pay the mobile bill. So every time from this fifty thousand, that a component gets deducted. Suppose you say ten thousand is my. See, I am telling all this thing because there is an analogy to the power budget from this normal household budget. the power budget how i am doing so 50000 is my income 5000 i have to save that is something suppose a condition is given okay so 10000 suppose house rent then i say that okay food bill so from 50000 10000 hat gaya then i say ki all the food items grocery this is just a uh, random uh, number i am giving okay so it is a vague number so 10000 uh, for the uh, food bills and groceries suppose you say 5000 for traveling or uh, okay then you say some school fees of your kids or whatever it is there so suppose so all these components it keeps on uh, subtracting from whom from this income of 50000 okay so i am not adding now all the components uh, so these are just an idea okay, okay a component uh, some expenditure takes place okay so here when i am trying to draw an analogy with the power budget what i will say is power loss took place okay so where will power loss take place over here the moment i connect the source that is my led or laser with the transmission line i have a connector over here so some connector loss took place after some distance i had a splice i will have splice if 
because the coming distance is quite. So at every splice, there will be loss. So suppose this is my splicing loss. Then I have the cable loss, which is taking place. So suppose this is the cable loss. Then what I do is, suppose if there is a jumper connection, which is present over here, there might be some kind of jumper connections on the rack. So that jumper connection gave me some other amount of loss. Okay. Plus then, as I mentioned, there will be some aging uh, loss due to aging, some loss due to temperature fluctuation. So what I want is then all these expenditure get subtracted. Then what I do is why also I want to save this. Please remember. Okay, why I want to save this is these are my regular expense, which okay, everybody will have food, everybody has to pay house rent, everybody has to pay mobile bill, electricity bill, school fees, traveling, and all, all, all those things are there. So those are mandatory. But suppose suddenly someone falls sick. Okay, so if you're doing that, then what? That is not a part of regular. Every month, nobody is going to fall sick in your family. But suppose they are going to, somebody is falling sick. I need to spend money for that treatment. Okay, so that was not there in part of this budget. So from where will I utilize? I'll not go to borrow from somebody. What I will do is I, I have saved 5,000 rupees. That is how I have planned my budgeting. So from this 5,000, then I can utilize that money for that medical expense, which has happened. Uh, some emergency has happened in the family. Or suppose there is a function of some relatives, which is not a part of your budgeting. Okay, and you need to buy your gift for them. Okay, so from where will you buy the gift? You will not say, okay, I'll give this 8,000 rent this month. No, these are all mandatory expenses, which you have to give full. Okay, you cannot cut short on that. Okay, so that gift and all whatever money you want to spend, you will spend from this. So in short, whatever I want to tell you is whenever you are preparing any kind of budget, you always cut to cut nahi karna chahiye. Okay, so we keep a margin, we save some margin. Now, why we keep a margin? If I talk of communication, it is all those temperature effect, aging effect. So due to that, some additional losses will take place. See here, in terms of money, these are the expenditure. When I'm talking of any system, apart from the input power, transmitter power and the receiver power, Power loss takes place due to each and every component which is present in the network. Ideally, no loss should be there, but we know that every component itself, the connector, just I'm, the component is good, but the connectors, the joints where I'm connecting that particular component or device, that itself will create a loss. Okay, so I have to keep a margin. And that margin we are calling as the power margin. So when I am doing the link budget analysis, okay, I have to keep a power margin. Okay, so that power margin is usually around 6 to 7 dB. Please remember this figure. Okay, so whenever you are doing the link budget analysis, transmitter power diya reta hai, receiver power diya reta hai, and all the loss components are mentioned in the question. The question will be very big. Okay, so you have to read through that question. You subtract all the loss components and see that you are left with the power margin of 6 to 7 dB. They will tell you usually calculate 6 to 7 dB or calculate the power margin. So your answer should fall in this range. If your answer is not falling in this range, means you have done some calculation mistake. Okay, so I need to keep a power margin. Now, system bandia design, ho gaya. I calculated the power margin. So instead of this 5,000, I should be getting six to seven dB margin of the power. Okay, now once this power budget is done, then what I will do is I will do the rise time budget analysis. Okay, so now what is the rise time budget analysis is the response time. Okay, so whether the bit error rate or the uh, bandwidth it is sufficient to give me a proper response. Okay, so I also need to know the rise time budget analysis because see you know due to chromatic dispersion and all delay takes place okay so the moment i switch on the input power level i don't immediately get the power at the output so there is some minimum delay okay and that 
uh, delay response besides the rise time and the, remember in any uh, wave also any uh, waveform that you take suppose a square wave okay from zero when it becomes uh, maximum what happens the rise time we calculate and then at the trailing edge we calculate the fall time okay so i need to check the response also of my system so before you actually start the system with the customer on you need to do the power budget and the rise time budget analysis so this was just an introduction we will go deeper into the design concept now this is actually the last module okay i have not taught you led or uh, that is the source and the detector but i'll just give you 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 know already what should be the characteristic of a source what should be the characteristic of a detector because all your knowledge of fiber optics now whatever you have studied will be utilized in this particular chapter so if a question comes on system design okay the chapter name is system design so you have to utilize all your knowledge that you know try to write in your own words don't try to copy from google google will give their way of understanding so whatever you know of a fiber whatever you know of a particular source whatever you know of a particular detector tara vomit kar do ye answer mein okay so that is how you should approach the particular answer if a short note on system budget is us okay so uh, we will be starting with the system design consideration and as i mentioned yesterday we will be considering point to point link okay so this is my uh, simplest design uh, of a system so i have the information source now since i'm using an optical communication so i have an optical transmitter so that can be an led or it can be a laser then i have the transmission channel which is an optical fiber it can be multi mode fiber or single mode fiber so any one based on what, whatever application i will select mmf or smf then i have the uh, optical receiver that is a photo detector so it can be a pin photo detector or an avalanche photo detector that is apd okay and then i have the users or the customers over here so this is uh your general uh, communication system now and it is a point to point system so what are the key system requirement if i want to analyze this optical fiber link so first point is what is the transmission distance even if it is a point to point link i should know what is the transmission distance okay so that is an important criteria then i should know what is the data rate or what is the channel bandwidth yes and then i should know the bit error rate so in fiber optics communication system when you are designing this thing or any communication system right now i am highlighting on fiber link so i should be knowing the transmission distance okay data rate ya bandwidth dono mein se both are related to each other and the bit error rate okay so i should be knowing that now when i talk about an optical transmitter so i need to have an optical transmitter i need to have an optical fiber i need to have an optical receiver now here we are not trying to include amplifier or repeater okay wo sab hum log complicated design mein nahi ja rahe okay so what i have in my design is point to point from a transmitter through fiber it goes to a receiver so the most simplest design is there in your syllabus in between i don't have any edfa soa neither i have a wavelength converter nor i have a coupler okay nor i have a multiplexer nothing is there only source detector and fiber okay so when i think about the source okay system design so i need to discuss so we need to discuss about the system design okay so when i talk about a source okay so source will be either led or laser we right now don't have any other uh, source apart from led or laser Uh, the ne next one the third one which is trying to incorporate the advantage of led or laser they will be uh, that is already the research work is going on and soon uh, in couple of years that third input uh, for the optical source might come into the market but right now which is used is led or laser or out of these two laser is the most widely used one why that we will study in detail right now i will mention few points why we will prefer laser compared to led 
Okay. So when I think about or talk about selecting a particular uh, source, that is LED or laser, to design my system, what I have to think in terms of emission wavelength. Remember, when we are designing an optical system, everything is around those three optical windows. Okay, so at which optical window will I transmit? So 850 nanometer, 1310, yeah, 1550. So I have to decide the emission wavelength. Then I need to decide the spectral line width. Spectral line width, if my center frequency is 1310, hai, so whether I want this kind of response or I want a, this kind of response. So, here spectral width is more, here spectral width is less. Okay, so with laser, we have the spectral width as less narrow spectral width. With LED, we have a broader spectral width. And what we want is, we want a narrow spectral width because then more number of wavelength I can allocate to multiple channels. So then I should select a source which has a narrow spectral width. So when I am deciding a source or selecting a source for my system, I see at what wavelength that source is operating. When I uh, see ki uska spectral width kitna hai, then obviously the output power. Okay. Uh, if I want more output power, I will go with laser. If I go uh, with less output power, then I might go with LED. Asa nahi hai ki LED ek dam hi nahi use hota. But commercially, what we are doing is we are transmitting the signal across the whole city or the whole state. Okay, so when my distance increases, I require more output power at the transmitter end. So then we will go with a laser. So that again, we will discuss about all these points, but these are the five uh, points. Then the affecting radiating area. Yes, in antenna also, you might have heard the, when, uh, how the antenna radiates, how much area that radiation uh, covers. Okay, so if I am having a source and the source will have, the entire source will not emit light. Okay, so I will have a radiating area, which I call it as an active area. So is my source radiating like this? Or is my source radiating like this? Okay, so I might have a bigger like this. Okay, so this one, the directivity is poor. Yeah, that it is more directive. So I will select the source where the radiating area is very narrow. I will not go in antenna. We want a broad radiating area. So that's why we go for an isotropic antenna. Okay, but here I don't want more radiating area because I want the light to enter. Remember the numerical aperture and the uh, acceptance spoon. Okay, my light from uh, that is emitted from the source, it should enter the fiber. So, if it is the fiber is very small. You know, it is a single mode 8 to 12 micrometer. So, if I have a broad radiating area, much of the light will fall outside the fiber. Okay. So again, there will be loss of signal. So I don't want a broad radiating area in case of my source. Then the emission pattern. Yes, this is how the emission pattern looks like. Okay, so I will not have uh, all round emission pattern, but I will try to have a highly directive emission pattern. So these are majorly the five points which we will consider while we are selecting the optical transmitter. Then comes the second component that is the optical fiber. Yes, so we have multi-mode fiber, we have single mode fiber, you know we have step index, graded index. Okay, so where will you go for graded index? Where will you go for step index? All that we have discussed in the first chapter. So then when I select an optical fiber, Okay, based on single mode or multi-mode, I will select the core size because if I want to send multiple signals, I will go with multi-mode fiber. If I want to send one signal through one fiber, that is the single mode fiber. So accordingly, I have to select the core size and that core size will decide whether it is single mode or multi-mode. Then the core index profile, yes, whether you want a step index, or you want graded index, where you want to reduce the dispersion effect, then the graded index fiber you have to select. 
So apart from the core size, you have the core index profile because multi-mode also we have step index as well as graded index by mode. So whichever uh, loss you want to decrease accordingly, you select the core index profile. Then what is the dispersion of that particular fiber? Okay, or what is the bandwidth that this fiber is going to transmit? Then what is the attenuation of the fiber? Yes, it's not only dispersion, we have attenuation. Okay, so I should select a particular batch of fiber which has the least att attenuation and where the delay dispersion is also less. Then what is the numerical aperture or mode field diameter? So one of the group is going to present on MFD, that is mode field diameter. So mode field diameter and the numerical aperture these are, are all the parameters of a fiber. So when I am selecting a particular fiber, I will look into all these aspects. So single mode chahiye, ya multi mode chahiye. So accordingly, I have to select the core size, whether I want to send a single signal, a single mode, or whether, whether I want to send multiple modes. So accordingly, my core size will change. If I want to go with uh, reduced dispersion, then I have to go with a graded index fiber. So core index also changes. Then what are the dispersion? That dispersion will affect the bandwidth. Okay, so we have done all these calculations of bandwidth, BL product, bit length product, Okay, then attenuation we studied in detail. So I should select a fiber with the least attenuation. And then what is the NA? That is the numerical aperture and mode field diameter of a particular fiber. So these are the points you will keep in mind while you are selecting a particular fiber. Then comes the optical receiver or the photo detector, which we call it over here. So the photo detector, usually we have pin, PIN photo detector or avalanche photo detector. Okay, so here between the P and N type region, I have an intrinsic region present. It's simple diode. Okay, you have your PN junction diode. Okay, so here it is PIN. So here I have an intrinsic re region present between your P type and your N type semiconductor. Okay, so you have PN junction diode. It is same only. Only I have this intrinsic region. And in avalanche photodiode, I will little bit vary the construction of a simple P and N type, and I will include a region where avalanche effect ho. You have also studied the avalanche effect. Okay, Zener breakdown may to look at avalanche effect. You have studied suddenly there is an increase in the uh, output. Okay, so I want an avalanche effect. So where I see here, I'm not using any optical amplifier, and usually the signal weakens before it reaches the receiver. So your pit photo detector output will be less, but suppose we require high power after the optical receiver. So then I will go for an avalanche photo detector because it automatically amplifies the signal. So mujhe alag se amplifier lagane ki zarurat nahi hai. So in those application, I will select an avalanche photo detector just the output already is amplified. Okay, so then when I select a uh, optical detector okay or photo detector what are the points which are again i will have to decide the operating wavelength okay agar yahan pe 13 10 nanometer uh, use kiya means i am transmitting i have will select a fiber at which is working at 13 10 i cannot have a photo detector which is working at 15 50 nanometer because i have not used a wavelength converter over here so i will have to select the photo detector which is also working at 13 10 nanometer so operating wavelength aega, speed, okay. The speed, what, what is the speed over here? Speed of conversion, because here I have the optical signal and here I have the electrical signal. And two very important points when I am talking about an optical detector or a photo detector is responsivity. You have heard about sensitivity, okay. Sensitivity of any device. So similarly, here sensitivity nahi bolke, responsivity bol rege, and quantum efficiency. Quantum because here since we are dealing with photons and light instead of a normal efficiency, see this is a system design. 
इनपुट पावर है आउटपुट पावर है ओके सो दे शुड बी सम एफिशिएंसी नाउ हियर वी आर टॉकिंग ऑफ द एफिशिएंसी ऑफ एन ऑप्टिकल फोटो डिटेक्टर सो सम अमाउंट ऑफ लाइट इज फॉलोइंग ऑन द फोटो सी इट इज अ डायोड ओके बट इट इज सेंसिटिव टू लाइट सो बेस्ड ऑन द अमाउंट ऑफ लाइट फॉलोइंग ऑन द फोटो डिटेक्टर दैट फोटो डिटेक्टर इज गिविंग अस एन इक्विवेलेंट current or an electrical signal okay so light is converted into current okay so kitna photons are falling on the photo detector and how many electrons are generated so based on that i need to calculate an efficiency so when i am talking about a photo detector responsibility in the next slide i have included the definition because we have not yet studied uh, in detail about the photo detector but when we will study in detail uh, sub separate ch chapter for optical detector so there we have lot of derivation and important numericals which are asked in mcq as well as uh, subjective question comes from responsivity and quantum efficiency so some derivations and from that derivation those formulas are there so right now what is responsivity so please remember jab bhi we are talking of an photo detector we have the speed we have the wavelength wavelength will always be there for all the component yahan pe mention nahi kiya but wavelength is present okay so operating wavelength speed responsivity and quantum efficiency now what is responsivity and quantum efficiency i have included those definition in the next slide so what is quantum efficiency it is defined as the ratio of number of electrons collected to the number of incident photon as i told you suppose this is uh, my photo detector okay so this is my photo detector which is present over here so on this photo detector the light is falling okay so here number of incident photons are there light is falling because photo detector converts light to electrical signal and from the photo detector we have the electrical circuit okay some battery and all will be there it's a normal diode cut circuit eh? okay but here it is in the reverse bias mode okay photo detector works in the reverse bias mode so some amount of current will flow in this particular circuit so this current usually we call it as the photo current ip okay so yahan pe incident photon hai and here we have the light here we have the light incident photon and here we have the photo current we call it so electrons which is like what is current it is nothing but the flow of electrons okay so quantum efficiency is the ratio of the number of electrons collected to the number of incident photon so i am actually calculating the conversion efficiency conversion from light to electrical signal okay so that is your quantum efficiency we don't simply call it as the efficiency we have to use the word quantum efficiency next is when i select a photo detector another important parameter is responsivity sensitivity okay so it represents the sensitivity of the photo detector so ye jo photo current hai ip it is directly proportional to the incident power and that ratio of proportionality so ip is proportional so incident for the photo current is directly proportional to the incident optical power pn and if i remove this uh, proportionality so your capital r is the proportionality constant please don't consider it as resistor it is just a proportionality constant so that is the responsibility in college if we were doing uh, the characteristic uh, on the trainer kit we calculate uh, so we after plotting the vi characteristic of the source and the vi characteristic of the photo detector from the graph we calculate the quantum efficiency we calculate the responsivity so that gives you the responsivity of the photo detector that is present in the kit but right now we are not able to do any such measurement okay so but at least i hope uh, i am not asking you anything but i hope you have understood this part i must stop
okay this slide is it clear all of you yes ma'am okay so when i now i will ask you one important question ye dekho uh, yes abhi mujhe design karna hai tumhe abhi pata hai ki if i want to select a source kya kya parameters i need to consider if i want to select a fiber what are the parameters i need to look into okay uh, it's an optical receiver what are the parameters See, accordingly then i will look into the data sheet right now joshua said that uh, in se uh, those mini projects uh, uh, those sessions are going on at 12 o'clock onwards i think jitin sir told you to attend right now madhvi ma'am is conducting the second session of how to read a data sheet in last friday I, i took one session how to read a data sheet for the analog ic now when you are designing an optical fiber you need to read the data sheet of the fiber component so from the data sheet you will get all these parameters okay now tell me so abhi tumhe design karna hai suppose i tell you so you need to select the source you need to select an optical fiber and you need to select the receiver you know what is your information source suppose you are using a voice channel or whatever you want to transmit or a data you want okay and here there are the users okay so out of these three so your part is only this three you are designing okay so teen cheez hai jo mujhe select karna hai okay so three aspects are there i you have the receiver you have the transmitter you have the optical fiber okay now tell me out of these three which one will you select first now usually what we say that three things are there i have a source i have a detector i have a fiber okay so you will decide any two components like suppose you decide सोर्स अंदर डिटेक्ट कर कि नहीं मुझे पिन यूज करना है मुझे एलईडी यूज करना है सो यू हैव ऑल द पैरामीटर्स ऑफ द सोर्स एंड द डिटेक्टर एंड बेस्ड ऑन दोस टू सिलेक्शन यू डिसाइड द पैरामीटर ऑफ द थर्ड दैट इज हाउ यू प्रोसीड द डिजाइन ओके सो टू अजम्पन आई टेक टू डिसीशन आई टेक एंड बेस्ड ऑन दैट टू डिसीशन आई सिलेक्ट और आई गेट द वैल्यूज ऑफ द थर्ड वन सपोज यू कैन सिलेक्ट एंड ट्रांसमीटर एंड फाइबर and then you decide or you choose the optical receiver based on these two design so out of these three which one will you select first do selection karna hai mujhe so what will you select first you will select the source you select the fiber or you select the detector source who said that joshua ma'am Joshua so Joshua said we will select the source first hey think think general tum tum ek engineer ho you know that suppose in a certain area these many people want the service you ek gaon mein tumhe set up karna hai wahan pe koi jio fiber gaya hi nahi hai so you know it's a population of 100 uh, houses so 100 connections will be there and from one of the uh, central office that is where you will have your optical transmitter you have to lay down the link so you have the users 100 users okay information source they simply want a voice unko telephone lines chahiye whatever okay so in between those 100 villages and your central office jahan telephone exchange hai suppose they want a telephone connection you are laying down your fiber so joshua will select the optical transmitter first think about it and then answer fiber and then receiver so lastly we can configure the transmitter accordingly so first you will select the fiber according to web hub then you will yes, select the receiver and then last you will select the transmitter yes ma'am okay i want this order tfr as such the transmitter fiber receiver okay so i will just write what webhub said webhub will select the fiber okay then he will select the receiver and then he will select the transmitter this is one option joshua tr 
Joshua, you said transmitter first. Then what will be the second one? I'll note down everybody's. Receiver. Then receiver. And then the fiber. Others? FTR. TR. Pella wala bolo? FTR. FTR. So F, fiber, transmitter, receive FTR. RFT. Who is that? Other. Why? Ma'am, I'm for sale. Like, no answer. By the receiver. See, I am asking the order. Ki pehle tum log kaun sa component choose karoge? So, first, will you select the receiver? Or you will pehle hi fiber ne? You will 13, 10 nanometer hi fiber use karna hai. So, my fiber is decided. Because see, here I'm not using multiplexing and all. So, if multiplexing DWDM use karte, so 15-15 nanometer hi I would have selected. But right now, I have not given you that. It's a point-to-point -point link. Okay, so question that everything has to be 15-15 nanometer that is not there. I'm just designing a point-to-point -point link. Yes. This four answers the order is still not correct. I received this four combinations from your class. It is still not correct. Anybody? Yes, I gave you a situation. 100 villagers hai. Unko mujhe service provide karna hai. So I need to send a particular information. Suppose it's a voice only, simple telephone line I need to set up. Go then. With this analogy, think ki pehle mein kya decide karo. Here, many of yours, first option is correct, last option is correct, middle option is correct. But then, charo mein, the correct sequence, sequence is not there. Anybody can come up with any other combination? Three things are there. Yes, Manas, Ajita, Callistus. Think, think, last time uh, why, uh, isme pucha tha. and coincidentally all three of us had put this question uh, in uh, the MCQ and whichever MCQ came, uh, this question was there. Term end way. Yes? Oh, it is a discussion. <laughs> Something please contribute to it. Today for Transmitter then select the fiber and then lay down the receiver. Anybody? The answer? Uh, RTS. R? T S. Why? Can you tell me? Ma'am, because uh, we don't know the exact uh, required fiber length. So we can start with placing the receiver first and then the transfer. That is the reason you want to give? Yeah, I can't think of it. See, uh, out of all this, uh, this is the correct one, the last one. Okay, so first I will select the receiver Q. I said I have 100 customers. In some areas, I can have 100 customers with 100 users of the system. In some places, I will have 1,000 users. Might be more also. Okay. So, your design scenario, I 100 customer ke liye provide karungi. the same design scenario will not be there for 1,000 customers. At least you agree to this particular point, all of you. 
Yes or no? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes. yes. Now, when I say that 100 customers ko mujhe service provide karna hai, so here, whatever is my output, which I'm getting at this particular point, see, in any system, why are we designing the system? We are designing it for the users of the system. We are not designing it as a design engineer or I am the boss of the company. No, I am designing it for the users. So right now, I have 100 users of the system. So I should have, pe tum lo kuch bhi kar lo. I am not bothered. I am, as a user, I am over here. So I should have sufficient power at this output. Jobi scenario ya pe hua, gain hua, loss hua. There should be sufficient power available at the photo detector so that power should be able to provide service to 100 users. Agar 1000 users hai, so automatically this power level requirement would be high. So agar mujhe pata chala ki 100 users hai and for 100 users, I require this much amount of power. Itna power agar mere detector ke pass uh, uh, detector ke baad niklega, then I will be able to provide service to 100 users of that network. So, which is the receiver which will give me power of, suppose 100 dB, just an example. Which is the receiver which will give me power output of 1000 dB? So, the very first thing that you will select is the optical receiver. So, ye hai number one. कि मुझे optical receiver का output power इतना होना चाहिए इतना होगा then only I can provide service to this many customer now once you have selected optical receiver कौन सा ऐसा transmitter है जो इतना power transmit करेगा ताकि it travels all those losses it incorporates so that I am able to get this much amount of power so first I select the receiver. When I select the transmitter, ki kon itna generate kar paega output power, uh, output power of that this optical transmitter block. So then the second component that I choose is the optical transmitter. And then once I select the transmitter, once I select the receiver, then I will select the fiber. Okay, now this fiber is up to us. Iska wavelength decide ho gaya, iska wavelength decide ho gaya. So automatically the fiber will be at that particular wavelength. 100 users hai. It is up to you whether you want. If the distance is less, then you can go for a multi-mode fiber. If this distance from the transmitter and the receiver is less, then you can go for a single mode fiber. So the third thing that you will select is the fiber. Okay. So this should be the order. So always remember when you are designing. See, like you go for a company sponsored project. Tumhe jo banana hai, company will not accept. Company knows ki they are making that product for a certain section of users. So they, they take a survey. They have a requirement. Based on their requirement, then the problem statement comes. Okay, so the very first thing is you decide the receiver. See who is the transmitter that is able to transmit that much power to the receiver thing, considering all the loss aspects. And then, which is the fiber through which I can connect two and one. So there, you need to check the distance. Uh, distance case is single mode or multi -mode. I hope at least something you could understand from this discussion of today. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I think time is up. I will take the attendance. Just a moment. <laughs>